I didn't tell him what it was. I said, please message me. I don't care what your religious aspects are, what your beliefs are. Just message me if you want to take part into the survey. And I asked, I asked well over 200 people, well over 200 people. I said, all right, do you believe in Ouija boards? Have you used one? And if you have, what are your experiences? Now, in order to qualify for that survey, you had to actually use it. I don't, didn't want to hear a belief system. I didn't want to hear what they thought. I didn't want to hear what their uncle, what happened to their uncle or their best friend or their grandparents. I wanted to know that they used it, and this is what happened. And, and surprisingly, out of that 250 people, only 20% had a bad experience. Now, out of that 20%, out of that 20%, about 18% of them, or, or out of that 20%, about 98% of them, I should say, were all religious. Yeah. Were they well, a yeah, that's... religion or, or anything, Jason? Any specific what? religion? Um. I, I believe the the um the Christians were the big one. There were some Wiccans that, that also well claimed to be Wiccan. That's the other big thing that's really annoying the hell out of me. Everybody's a witch now. Oh my god. Well um, witches and Wiccans are two different things though. You, you don't well, they're witches. They're, 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 witches. they're both witches. They're, they're witches. It's as simple as that. But it, it, it's kinda weird. It, it's kinda weird to know that, you know, out of out of all the people that had something negative to say about the, the, the Ouija board they were religious. They were the religious ones. Right. What they don't, and one thing I tell people too is, is, is just like you do. I say it's not the board itself that could be a gateway. It's the intent. It's the person and yeah. mental states and the energy that you give off could be causing if there's such thing as a portal or the negative energy that you could be attracting. That's what's doing it. It's you. It ain't the board. It's yeah. the mindset. It's, it'd be, we did experiments with that. Okay? So we, there's a, um, on, on, ne- on and putting negative energy in the environment, a place that had axe murders in Chicago. You know, we, uh, we actually had a bio cam that shows your, your bio energy that hospitals use to see if medications are working. And we would just walk by and randomly hand someone an axe. And just by holding an axe, not knowing that there was axe murders, just holding an axe, their, their personality changed to a darker personality. You know, it's because really? it's, 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 oh yeah. And, um, and then we, I actually did one where I sat in a chair and I purposely pissed myself off, got really revved up, you know, really ball of energy, screaming, screaming, screaming. And I jumped out of the way. When I jumped out of the way, there was a black image of me still sitting in the chair. Interesting. Yeah. That's and really it, interesting. It just shows you that you can imprint your own energy on the environment and other people can experience, they, they can actually, it's just like osmosis. It goes from a higher concentration to lower concentration. Yeah. It just yeah. sucks it in like a sponge. Well, well wow. they say that anger anger and sex drive are typically the two strongest types of energies that you can release mm-hmm. in the atmosphere. Oh, that's oh, that's that's it. Because they also people that realize this, is they sit there and they say, well, I'll never use a Ouija board, but they use audio recorders all the time and ask questions. Yeah. Right. Aren't you doing the same thing? Yeah, <laughs> this the is the case, interesting using thing the case B two and asking it to respond, it's the same thing. It is, yeah. it is. It's the interesting thing about that, and I've gotten in arguments with people about this too. They say, "Well, it's, it's giving you control. It's giving an entity control over your body." I'm like, "No, you're not, dumbass. You're giving it control over the fucking pancetta for one, and for two. How many of you have actually walked around an abandoned building or whatever thing and yelled out at the top of your lungs, if you want, please touch me.'" I mean, come on, you idiot. <laughs> right, throw something at me. Touch me. Well, it's, a, it's the same touch, thing. Touch my KT yeah. yeah, and it's if you actually look at it that way, using a Ouija board is actually less harmful because you're just asking it to spell something out. Right, you're yeah. not saying pull my hair or touch it, me or it, throw it, something at me. I mean, you're downright yeah, I, I agree with you. You know, inviting invasion. I agree with you 100%, and you're not asking it to touch you. You're asking it to move the pancetta to spell something out. Answer questions. And then you got to rely on the spirit to know how to spell. <laughs> no, no, no hey, exactly. I'll probably get that one spirit with Tourette's or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's yes or no. There's always yes or no on there, you know. Or read, or be able to read. It's like, yeah, I've seen some of the posts I've seen some people on Facebook. I don't think they know how to read or write, so it's pretty scary. They don't. <laughs> it, it, it's quite frightening sometimes. The illiteracy on Facebook is mind-blowing. I don't know. My spelling sucks. I'll be the first to admit it. Yeah, but you're literate, though. 
I'm literate. I am literate. Yes. It's all good. And I can only read when I have my glasses on. (laughs) (laughs) True. (laughs) Which typically I I don't have them on at night because I'm only supposed to wear them for reading and um, I always yeah, yeah. I always write that shit off to your your brain is working faster than your fingers are typing if you spell something wrong you know. Sometimes I do do that. Sometimes, and, and my on my laptop, considering it uses a wireless, um, mm-hmm. sometimes that connection ain't really one hundred percent good. So I'll be like three letters past the first one, and um, it hasn't even begun to start writing the the, the word yet. On the screen, so <laughs> one one letter winds up getting fucked up or whatever, and then autocorrect kicks in, and it's like, oh man. Yeah, I'm looking for it work. The, the middle keys, like the S D and a couple of those middle keys, they stick for some reason, or they don't all they go into all down the way. So a lot of times, my my letter, my words are missing S's, D's, and you know whatever the other letters are in the middle of the keyboard. Yeah. Yeah. But when I go to my desktop, I'm normally okay. I'm a lot better on my desktop than I am on my laptop. But I prefer my laptop. Go figure. (laughs) Oh, well. It is what it is. But uh, what kind of things do you have going on in the future? Are you doing the uh, – you're not doing the uh, the Roku thing anymore, right? No, no, no. Yeah, I'm not doing the Roku thing anymore. Um, Got rid of that a long time ago. Again, that was that was more, you know, I was kind of I was kind of under the pressure of making it for someone else, and you know, I wanted, you know, especially since it's out of my own pocket, I needed the, the flexibility to be on my own schedule. You know, if I put something out every month, great. If I put something out every two months, hey, that's that's my business. Um, just for example, we're filming. Uh, we have three episodes that are out right now, and the fourth one is coming out um, probably at the end of January. And I'm filming the first scene tomorrow. Now, to to, to give you an idea of, of what go, you know, how much we put into this, this one scene is probably going to be the opening scene of the next episode. It might be a minute long once it's all edited down. We're going to be filming the scene for probably six or seven hours, just to get it right, just yeah. to get the lighting right, just 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 to get that mood, you know, because a lot about things about television storytelling or video storytelling is that you have to, you, you want to set that mood with a simple light on a face or a simple look or, and, and a lot of times that's, that's gone uh, in, in paranormal television is, is, is it's just the mundane, the flipping off the light sequence, we set up the cameras, you know, we're done. We're actually reenacting some stories to kind of put the, put the viewer in the mood of the people who are telling the story, you know, what they were really feeling, how scared they were. Um, if it's a very scary story, we'll make the reenactment very, very scary, you know, just to set that mood, and then we'll tell the story, and then we'll go in and investigate. So it's a little bit of everything. Excellent. And, and is that just uh, is that uh, that's not on TV, right? That's just mostly DVD. No, that's so- on that's on YouTube. I have a I have a channel out there called Strange Curiosity. It is free for everyone. And that was another thing with Roku that was a little difficult is is that you had to buy a Roku box, you know, and there was only certain people that had it. And you know, I wanted to do something that everybody around the world can, could get a hold of, and and uh, it's it's taken off. I mean, our my channel has only been out there for about six months now, and you know we've we've already crossed the hundred, we, we broke hundred thousand views uh, several weeks ago. Um, so and it's it's gaining momentum every day. So you know, hopefully by the end of next year we'll have over a million views already on on that uh, on that little channel. Excellent. You ever think about working with uh, Netflix or something like that? Um, ironically, yeah. I mean, I have, but um, I'm I can't really say a lot right now. But there's a lot of European interest in uh, what I'm doing right now. So uh, a lot of European networks have have been contacting me, uh, you know, with with the interest in Strange Curiosity. So we'll we'll see how that goes. We have a very large European and Australian uh, fan base uh, with Ghost Lab. And when we started putting this out, it, it spread across Europe pretty quickly. Um, in fact, we probably have just about the same number of fans in Europe with Strange Curiosity as we do in the United States. Excellent, excellent. I don't think I have too many fans in Europe. I think I think I got a, a few hundred of them or something like that, but I don't think I have too many. I got to bring you up over in that area more, I think. Yes, I mean, I, um, I went to Australia. Um, they flew me over there back in June which is their winter time, which is great. Escape Texas in June, go to their winter time. 
that was a nice uh, break. But uh, did a big seminar in Sydney. Did one in Melbourne, and it was, I mean it was packed houses. I mean it, it, you're just you're surprised. You you know it's, it's kind of humbling too. All the way around the world, the opposite end of the world, and these people know who I am. It, it, it was a that was probably one of the most humbling experiences I've had. That's awesome. That's fantastic. That's you know, they talk about air cues and they talk about your episodes and they talk about, you know, it's it's funny. And, and and one of the things about Ghost Lab, we have we stopped filming it four years ago. Yeah. September 2010 is when we stopped filming it, and it's still going strong in, in, in syndication all across Europe. There's there's countries out there like uh, uh, Bulgaria and uh, freaking countries that I've never even heard of before that are just now seeing Ghost Lab. So every time I turn around, I get this new fan base because they think it's a brand new show. Um, yeah. And so that, that's something to be said about about a show that's still going strong four years after it even stopped filming. Yeah, yeah. it really does. That is impressive. Yeah. It was one of the best shows that, that were on TV. You know, as I said in the beginning, I liked it because it was extremely It was a really good show. And uh, Yeah, you know, we were we were the right show for the wrong network. That's how I, that's how I look at it. <laughs> yeah, pro- yeah, probably. It, is it, Brad? Is, do you think that there really is the right network? <laughs> <laughs> well, w- w- yeah. When you, when you talk about just your your base business uh, of, of the network business, yeah, your your sci fi's and your travel channels are great to be on because, like I said, they have nothing else. You know, um, so uh, you know, a ghost show where they travel around, you know, versus um, like sci fi has a lot of really, really crappy sci-fi movies on that nobody watches. So, yeah, that's that's all I got in the channel. They're like Sharkzilla and you're like crap Shark- like that, but whatever. Sharktopus meets Sharkzilla? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, they do play a lot of weird fucking movies. And I'm like, oh, my like, God. Clearly, I've seen that one. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, like travel channels. Like, there's only so much I can see of a guy driving around the country eating cheeseburgers and, and you know, fatty foods. And, yeah. uh, like, man, where do I sign up for that job? Oh, I'd, I'd like to do that. I'd like to do that 100%. Drive around and eat other people's weird fucking food. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, but yeah, but have you seen have you seen him now? Have you seen? I mean, he had to go on a massive breakdown diet after doing that show for a few years. I'm not surprised. Yeah. I think he's lost like 80 pounds. He looks freaking amazing. Well, with me, it's like with with Ghost Lab. I gained I probably gained 35 pounds filming Ghost Lab just because of the schedule. Because we yeah. would we would we would film all day up until like midnight, one o'clock in the morning. Then we'd be done. We'd eat dinner like at nine o'clock at night. So by the time we're cool. done, we're we're hungry, you know. So we find the twenty-four hour diner. We go in. We order pancakes and bacon and whatever else, and then we go right to bed. And then we get yeah. we get up and go back to work again. So it was like just the, and then travel airport to airport, eating fast food. It uh it it puts the weight on you. It really does. Oh, absolutely. I mean, of course. Four years later, I still got it too. So, man, that's just my lazy butt <laughs> at this point. Man. You can't blame that on the show. <laughs> oh well, it's par for the course now. Brad's looking at what I ain't getting on the show. That's my battle scar right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, if there's anybody in the paranormal that you would prefer to work with, who would it be, Brad? Um. Well, I have you know, I've worked with Chip Copy quite a bit. Um. Um, I don't know. I really anyone in the paranormal. How about how about you, Jason? You can, how about you can that? Anytime you want, Brad. Aww. So I, I, prefer, I, I, pre, I actually prefer to stay away from the the quote unquote celebrity types. I mean, unless I know them very well, like Chip. Um, yeah. but um, it's you know it's kind of more about just for example, there's a lot of guys out there that you know, are real well known in the paranormal, but outside of the TV show and outside of it, they don't do anything in the paranormal. Yeah, it doesn't it's mean like anything. If you said, hey, yeah. you got an investigation, they wouldn't they give crap less if you had an investigation. Really? It's like they're, they're, they're not going to do it. And I can kind of understand because when you're, That's like when we're filming Ghost Lab and stuff and we were constantly, uh, you know, ghost hunting and investigating. 